This isn't the best angle, but it's gonna have to do. Maybe if I stand over here a little bit. Okay. So I'm expecting um, a couple snakes today. They're a pair of hog island boas. Wow. Hey Jackie, look. Come stand over here. They're a pair of hog island boas, and um, I wanted to wait to make this video so that I could show you how we actually make and set up one of our naturalistic habitats, like completely start to finish. Um, so like I said in the other video, I'm like kind of just based based all of this off of Vin Russo's book. Jackie, excuse me, please. Uh, because the way I see it, he's an expert and I'm not, so I'm literally just like following everything he says. Um, and so far it's been really cool and it's been really working with my other snakes, so we're going to go um, and do the same thing for these two. Um, I'm actually going to go pick them up in a few minutes, but I figured I would show you real quick. Um, I got a bin, I got a tall bin this time and not, if you can see one of my like shorter bins, these snakes are also a lot younger. They're within a year old. Um, I think she's six months and he's only like two months. Hey Jackie. No. Hey. Yeah, come over here. So I want to get them taller bins as they grow so that they can like, you know, do stuff and like perch on things. Um, I would have preferred to get this maybe a little longer, like lengthwise. I think the length on this might be um, 24 inches. And truthfully, I would have, wouldn't have would mind something a little longer. So for right now, it's fine. I also don't really know how big they are. So um, this is just a regular drill. It's not like an impact. It's just a regular drill. Um, and you need a drill bit. That's a regular drill bit. Not like, like a screw. Screw bit is something like this. That's not going to give you holes. That's going to like crack your bin and be silly. So you have to use a drill bit. Um, and then it's like, it's not loud. I mean, I'm like literally holding my baby. So I've noticed that if you do a roughly eight to 10 holes on each side of the bin, um, that to me just seems to be working in my environment. Start, like do more holes at first because you can always cover them like with a piece of tape. Um, I think that, it, Jackie, please don't, please don't. I think that when you put less holes, um, then you've got a whole setup that you've already done and you have to take the snake out when they're trying to get used to their environment um, to drill holes. So just drill like a little bit more and if you notice that it seems um, like too airy, then go through and put some, some duct tape on it. All right, so I'm just gonna drill a few holes. Let's see if I can't do this with a baby on my chest. Ready to? That's it. Here, actually, let me see if I can't like. Oh, and you want to go from the inside of the bin out. You don't want to go this way, um, and that's because there's, there's like shards of plastic that kind of come off when you're doing this. Maybe you'll see in this one. Whoop. pieces of plastic you don't like want that to be on the pen so now I'm just gonna go through and drill all the holes and be back I'm not gonna sit here and do all that okay put your drill away don't leave your shit out plastics junk um, I've tried a very little options in substrate so I can't really say um, for my personal opinion <laughs> for my personal opinion what I think works best but according to Vin Russo newspaper does um, I use newspaper or paper towels. I tend to use paper towels when it's a new snake so that if there's mites or anything that I can, um, I can look for it. So we're going to go get the paper towels because I didn't think that far ahead, did I? Okay. Paper towels. Here we go. Back to our little zone here. Okay. So, putting in the paper towels, I'll show you after I get it in there. I'm not putting a lot, I'm just putting literally like one layer down kind of thing. Just enough for them to have. Uh, screw it up a little bit more. 
this is so uncomfortable sitting down in this room. Wait, I don't know why I didn't think about maybe putting this up. Too late. Okay, so we're gonna change direction here. Okay, here's the setup. Move some stuff out of the way. That's where they're going. So I wanna make, excuse me, Jackie. So obviously I wanna make one side the hot spot and one side the cool spot or cooler I should say so so here I have a hide um these this isn't really my favorite type of hide but it's what I've got right now and I don't think that I really need to go out and get one it's fairly large um and that's why I think it'll be perfect for the two of them I cannot believe my husband actually allowed me whoops why do I keep dropping my kids toys in here here you go so um, I can't believe my husband allowed me to use this, um, but this is an antler, clearly, um, that we found in the woods. My dog that's no longer with us is the one that actually found it, I believe. So that's going to go in there, and that gives them, a, obviously, clean. It's been in our house for, like, years. It has no parasites or anything. Um, and this just gives them something to perch on. So Jackie? Okay, so here's the water. Um, I'm starting to think that this... Oh my god, Sadie, stop. I'm starting to think that this... I'm going to have to rearrange a little bit to kind of accommodate for the water. You know what? I think... Here, let's see. If that's going to stay like that, I want to make sure that their water is accessible. I think that's a great water right there. So now... So... Lot, this thing is still up there, still gives them a place to perch. You can take the water out, good. So now I have Exoterra plants, and I'm just gonna place them, you know, around, kind of trying to make sh make it look, um, give them some kind of hiding places, give them some. Uh... At first, I was like, when I first read Finn Russo's book, I was kind of like, oh, you know. He's got the plants and maybe it does, maybe it can't make that much of a difference. Let me tell you, it does make a difference. Like having some naturalistic features in here, one, is more appealing to uh, me personally. And two, it's really cool to see the snakes actually utilize it. Um, you know, in the last video I showed Throne, um, or explained I should say, Throne sitting on the edge of his hide and actually waiting for his food. And I just thought it was so cool. So... If you are thinking like, oh, you know, I want to be able to do naturalistic setups for my boas, um, this is based on what Vin Russo said, and I think it's so cool. I really love watching the animals explore. Um, now that I'm going up, I think the next spin I would get for these guys might be a little longer this way, um, a little longer, and I think the height's great. I can even add some more branches. Um, another thing that I like that tips that somebody gave me was to, or the internet gave me, is to, you know, you use just plastic containers for water, which I think most people do, um, and then you can use rocks to kind of hold them down so that the snake isn't dumping it, because that's seriously a pain, and I use these, uh, this is a crystal that me, Sadie, stop wiggling, that me, my husband, and my dad found, um, we just have a place locally that we have a bunch of crystals, so you can put something in there, and it's, like, really pretty and appealing to see, I just love it, so I'm gonna put the cover on, that's not trash. I don't have, like, trash just sitting here. That's baby clothes. Okay, so covers on. Uh, make sure that the temperature is good on the heat mat. Get everything together and get ready to go pick up my snakes. Okay, so we just got the Hog Island. Jackie, get out of the frame, please. We just got the boas. Um, so as I'm unboxing them, I'll tell you a little bit about them. And if you don't know anything about Hog Island boas, they're basically um, one of the locality boas um, closer to, it's an island in, South, in Central America, let's just put it that way. Um, they don't normally grow as big as a common boa, um, but they can get a little bigger than like your typical dwarf. So, I texted the guy or emailed him. And we've been back and forth for the last couple weeks, actually. Um, he had never shipped before, and I live, you know, he's in Pennsylvania, and I'm in Vermont. And I really just wanted these snakes. They're seriously, 
What in the heck's going on here? They're seriously some of the most beautiful Hog Island boas I've seen, and I haven't seen them in person. Jackie, I need you to back up, sweetie, okay? I know you're excited, but I shouldn't probably be doing this with a baby on my chest. Um, but it wasn't really my intention. I thought these guys were going to be asleep by now. And if you're a stay-at-home parent or a parent in general, I guess, don't ever assume your kids are going to behave when just assume that they're not. So, like I said, I'd rather not have her. Jackie, no. I'd rather not have her on me, but the guy said these snakes are really, really sweet. Um, Jackie. Jackie Bragg, no. My gosh, she's trying to climb over the couch and she's literally going to land on this. So, let me see if I can't set this up better because what I have here. Let's see if this will work. So I have the box right here and then I have their container right here. So I just want to make sure that I'm kind of doing them. I'm not going to play around with these guys. I'm literally just going to take them out and put them in because I don't want to stress them out anymore. Shipping is so stressful for snakes as it is. So Jackie, back up, please. Here, go throw that away her to be distracted for a minute okay I don't know what you guys like I'm every time you unbox a snake like I get nervous like my heart starts racing and I'm like great I'm gonna be shaky trying to pick these snakes up um okay here it goes Jackie back up hi guys hi hi Jackie, I need you to back up, sweetie, okay? Back up, Jackie. They're not thrown. Jackie, I need you to back up, please. It's not Sabbath either. These are different snakes. Okay, so the female does have some stuck shed. He did warn me about that. Um, I just want to try and go in and grab. They're obviously stressed out, and I don't want to, like... So this must be the male. Let me put him right in. There, buddy. Sorry, sweetie. Okay. Jackie, back up. I'm just going to grab my snake hook. Because I don't know these snakes, even though he said they're friendly, he does want to kind of come out. Back up. Okay. This must be the female. I'm just gonna reach right in. And out she comes. And put her right in near her new home. Oh my gosh, guys, they're so beautiful. Okay, ready? Okay, here they are in their new habitat. Um, they are absolutely beautiful. So that I'm assuming is the male. Jackie, excuse me. And the one that's kind of banana-y colored, yellowy orange. I think that's the female because he did say the female had a little stuck shed um, and he said that she was going to be going into shed soon. Yeah. So here they are. They're beautiful. I'm like shaky because I get like nervous. So I'm just going to let them be, put their lid on and let them be snakes. Oh, guys, no. these guys have been in here for just a few minutes and they're already exploring and checking stuff out. Um, you can just see how beautiful this is the male, and the guy who sold them to me told me that they are just so sweet. Um, and getting them out of the bag was really easy. So they're just staying by the warmth. I'm hoping that they'll go in the hide. I can't really see where the female's face is. I can just see her little tail. It looks like she's kind of gone into the branches, so I'll let them be. Um, but I'm very happy with them. Uh, they look great. They don't look overweight. They look absolutely perfect. Um, yeah. Okay, so I do want to add real quick that Sabbath, um, the boa, the female boa that I got from Mike from Boston Boas, um, does eat live. So when I tried to feed her and she wasn't eating, it was because she normally eats live. Um, she's six months now, and I think that it's a great time to just 
get her to switch over. Um, so I did get frozen thawed, or frozen, I'm going to thaw them. I got frozen um, mice today. The thing that stinks about living in the middle of nowhere, Vermont, is that there's literally two pet stores within an hour away. And I would just order them online, um, frozen rats. However, the shipping is really expensive and I have different size. I only have four boas and they're different sizes. So it's, it's hard to be like, oh, I'll take one of these and one of these or a few of these and a few of these. It doesn't really work that way. You kind of have to buy it in bulk. So it's easier for me to just go to the pet store. Pillsbury is really good. They're really great people. Um, pet stores in general aren't really my favorite thing, to be completely honest. Um, I just feel like they never really have the time that they should have to take care of the animals. Anyway, I'm going on a weird rant about pet stores. But we went to the pet store um, and we got some frozen mice. And I'm going to dethaw them, give them to Sabbath. Throne doesn't need a meal. She's the only one that needs a meal. Um, the boas I got today um, have just eaten last week and they eat bi-weekly. So I'm okay with that. I'm just going to feed Sabbath later and I'm really hoping that she'll um, take this thawed mouse. One of the tips I got online, which I think is a great tip, um, the only problem is I wasn't able to execute that, would be um, to take some used bedding from the mice and rub it on the frozen mouse or the thawed mouse so that um, it smells kind of like fresh, nasty mouse. Um, but when I went to the pet store, they told me that they had just cleaned and they don't have any messy bedding. bedding so I'm just going to dethaw it, make sure it's really nice and warm for her, and go from there. So 